so today we're going to be talking about our offshore medical kit uh, because Delos is getting ready to cross the Atlantic again, begin another season. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of every season we sort of go through the kit, uh, we find the medications and stuff that have been expired, that we've used, that we need to get more of, we write everything down and then we try and replenish the kit. And this is a video that I've kind of wanted to make for a long time just about how this kit came around in general. Uh, and some of the resources that we found and used and how we have it organized and what we've actually run into out there, the types mm -hmm. of things that have, uh, that have happened, the incidents we've come across, go through the whole thing. I thought it could be kind of cool. So before leaving Seattle, I had no idea about any of this stuff. I'd basically taken like a pretty basic first aid class. One of the first things that was recommended was this book. It's called Advanced First Aid Afloat. It's specifically meant for first aid for somebody that's at sea, sailing remotely, doesn't have uh, medical care available. You know, you just can't call 911 and have somebody show up. So it goes through a, a bunch of scenarios on things to treat. We've actually used it a number of times. In the very back, it has uh, a sample first aid kit. Um, that I think is a pretty good start, so I definitely recommend this. When I was in Seattle, I spoke to a physician or an MD that had some knowledge of marine medicine. They are out there and they're super helpful. Most of them are sailors themselves, and if you consult with a doctor that has an emphasis or knowledge of marine medicine, they're gonna be able to hopefully write you prescriptions for some of the things that you're gonna wanna take offshore. I visited a doctor in Seattle. He wrote a number of prescriptions to a place called Lafferty's Pharmacy. I don't know if they're still around, but they gave this cheat sheet, which we found so, so useful. So it's a couple pages. Of, um, it has to list of the pain medication, uh, whether it's for minor pain, moderate pain, severe pain, everything for the kit. When I started, came to $540.83. August 19th of 2009. So there's a lot of stuff now like online that you can buy pre-packaged ocean cruising kits. They're more expensive, they're like $1,200 to $1,500 if you don't do it yourself. But it comes with literally everything and comes from a, a specialized doctor. And it yeah. has all the antibiotics and it like does. severe there's, there's pain. A, there's a, cru a cruiser prescription med kit, that one's $1,500 and it does all the, as it's from ISN, the heavy duty painkiller ones and the like triage kits are more expensive. Yeah. We could talk about how we sort of have the kit broken down. Well, well they were always in bags, but at one point Karen organized it <laughs> into better bags. <laughs> like, I remember when I came on the boat, it was kind of all in a big bucket in one of the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good, especially because it has some of the heavier pain medication to like have it in like kind of a safe place. And then we just divided everything into different bags that like cold and flu, dental, antibiotics, burns. So it's kind of divided. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's okay. I mean, it's not ideal. It just takes up a lot of space and the cabinet is pretty small. So it's always kind of like shoved in there. But the, the ones that we use most often, we keep yeah. towards the front. So like obviously the seasickness ones. It's nice to have a bag dedicated to that. Yeah. Obviously the slight pain bag is really cool because that's like your general ibuprofen, aspirin, acetaminophen, and strong pain medication we very rarely Just stays use. in the back, yeah. We had one incidence where we had somebody on the boat, I don't know if we had a party or something, but one of the strong pain pill bottles got raided. And then it was empty. Oh, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> they left the bottle behind. They left the bottle, but it was empty. <laughs> so we ended up keeping this not yeah. in the in, in the, the in the in the head anymore. Yeah, the we, public we started head. locking it in the in the back in a cabinet. So maybe keep that in mind. So, like well, what we have in the really heavy pain medication. Like when would you give that to somebody? So th this is this is lidocaine. So this is injectable lidocaine. Maybe if we were gonna pull somebody's tooth with the windlass or something. That, yeah. Sew so your arm back up or something. Yeah, so this is Demerol. So I think this is if somebody's under severe trauma, I probably wouldn't use this unless we were on the phone with somebody that knows a lot more than us and they're like, okay, yeah. check blood pressure, Definitely. stabilize them. If they're in severe pain, you don't want them to go into shock, something oh, like that. Yeah, of course. So that we've never had to use the Demerol. 
This is methylpregnazone. I think it's also pretty, pretty intense. Uh, the only fairly intense stuff we had to use was uh, still pain, which uh, if somebody gets a migraine or something like that. Um, but we've never carried morphine or anything like that. Itch. There's also an antifungal bag. Mm -hmm. So this one has all your creams uh, for like, what? Ringworm. Uh, ringworm is a common one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes really. I get this little rash right here and it's just a circle of ringworm weirdness. And we have a whole bag to cover that stuff. And it comes and goes. It'll disappear for like three or four months and then somebody will come on the boat and they'll get it in a random place. Okay, so we have uh, like just general antifungal creams that will take care of that. Isn't it the same cream that takes care of athlete's foot? Antifungal clotrimazole cures both athlete's foot, relieves itching and burning, greaseless and non-staining. Um, the other weird thing is, I don't know if everybody's ever seen it, but if you've spent a lot of time in the sun uh, and on your back and sometimes your chest, you start getting these white kind of patches or spots and it looks like your skin is sort of losing pigment. It looks uh, like you're peeling. It looks like you're peeling, but yeah. you're not. It's your skin has just become a lighter color. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of patchy. That is actually caused by a fungus uh, and that can be cleared up by washing your body in uh, like anti-dandruff shampoo, like Head and Shoulders. Mm -hmm. Head and Shoulders, the one dandruff shampoo that really works. I think we've had it for a while, a few times, and then yep. somebody told us that and we're like, oh, and then it goes away right away. <laughs> um, okay, so what do you think is the most common thing we've run into kind of on the trip? I would say the most common one is definitely UTIs. So this yeah. is a, a P-strip test. Uh, you can find P-strip tests that will identify a lot of different things. Just from P, this one does 10 different parameters and one of them happens to be uh, UTI. Yeah. Uh, so once you figure out, yes, it is a UTI, then you then have to consult your list and figure out how to treat that. And typically it's gonna be some sort of an antibiotic. So you go to the antibiotic bag and we Find have the doxycycline or whatever else you have on hand. Wide variety. Yeah. Of really good antibiotics. Uh, I know some people might criticize for self-medicating, self-doctoring, but a lot of the places we are, you just do the best you can with the information you have. Um, we're lucky that we have a phone, a sat phone. We can call a physician if needed. Uh, a lot of local places aren't going to have this sort of resources. And uh, something to keep in mind too is it's always like our last point is going towards the medical bag of antibiotics or yeah. painkillers. It's like, yeah. if you have something wrong, just don't automatically start thinking you can take pills and make it better. Like, wait it out a little bit, see if you get better. Except for water. if you, if you, it pees, if it, if it pees, burns when you pee. Yeah, yeah, it's like sort of UTI, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just uh, thought about that I think is really important and that we've, even though we tell people, uh, I feel like it's really good to repeat it and really be aware. Like when we have different crew on board, we always tell them as soon as you feel something, even though it's a, just a little thing, like, oh, I have this cut and it itches or something, like let people know beforehand. Because it's when you're waiting with UTIs, it's when you're waiting with all of these things and don't tell people around you that it can escalate very fast and you get a fever and maybe you become so passed out that nobody really knows that you've been peeing blood for the last three days. So it's like always tell everyone like what's going on in your body even though it's minor things because if something then escalates very fast at least people know like okay she was feeling this like three days ago. Yeah, Especially yeah. for diarrhea too. Yes. Because yeah, if you've had diarrhea for you know a few days mm -hmm. you're probably getting dehydrated and we've had people get literally collapse. Yeah. From not telling us early enough when we could have treated it early. Yeah. So Brady, do you want to talk about uh, gastrointestinal hmm. distress and some of the things that... Yeah, we went from rough to. times. I think that the worst was when we were in Indonesia mm -hmm. and I got sick within the period of like two or three hours. My fever went up to like 105, something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Just sweating and like hallucinating and feverish. Yeah, the best thing that we had was that book, right? that yep. book of being able to go through and be like, all right, these are the symptoms, this is what's happening, it can be this, this, or this, and if you take this antibiotic and it doesn't help, then you know it's not that, or if it helps, then great. Maybe the most common antibiotics that we have 
that kind of the ones that we do use and and, and have to refill is yeah Z pack. These are really really handy to have. At least one, I'd say doxycycline. Doxycycline is used to treat like a lot of things, yep, in so UTIs included. Doxycycline. Um, also, doxycycline is uh, a prophylactic for malaria. Yeah. So if you're going to malaria country for like uh, a few weeks, they will give you a low course of doxycycline. To take the entire time. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but if you're staying there more than a few weeks, you can't really stay on doxycycline that long. It's, it's not good, so you just go without it. Yeah. But it, also the treatment is a high dose of doxycycline. Uh, yeah. Didn't you get bit by a tick? Oh, I did, because oh, I was thinking about it, and after I got the spite, that had a strange like round center that turns bra black and then brown. Like I started getting aches under my arm and my lymph node here was swollen. And I wonder if like the poison from the bite kind of stuck in there. Uh, I had a strange, what looked like a spider bite on my hand and it was slowly growing like this, killing flesh. And I was, that's why I thought it was a spider. We were sailing down the wild coast and when we got into Port Elizabeth, I went into the doctor and she's like, that's not a spider bite, that's a tick bite. And I was having like these weird uh, fevers and I couldn't sleep well and I was having like hallucinations and, and stuff. Uh, but then she said, yeah, I know exactly what that is. Have you been in the bush? You're like, yeah, we were or game parks hiking around in the bush. And she's like, all right, uh, gave me doxycycline, which we had on the boat, but you know, it's like, five dollars to fill a prescription in south africa so i got a new one and i started feeling better like within like 12 hours yeah. 18 hours did the full course so that's another one that doxycycline is good for yep amoxicillin cipro so ciproflaxin broad spectrum antibiotic most useful for respiratory urinary tract and traveler's diary infections cephalaxin is the other one so, okay, so cephalaxin skin and structure staph and strep fish poisoning lower respiratory and UTIs. So I think those are those are ones that I would definitely want. Yeah, for okay. sure. And along with those is is the, like if it comes with diarrhea, what do we have to keep hydration up? So this is basically like, you can't keep anything down. Water is draining out from every end. These are the tabs here. Oh, char is that charcoal tabs? Thermo tabs. That's the glucose. Yeah, we had to give Bubs this when she collapsed in Madagascar. Yeah. She yeah. didn't tell us that she had diarrhea for three days, and then we turned around and she was literally falling out of the toilet. Yes, and um, she couldn't keep anything down, so we literally just shot that into her mouth, and she sort of started coming back. Uh, both you and Karen are pretty prone to ear infections. Ear infections. When you're yeah. swimming, what do you guys do for that, or to prevent that? The best thing we've done is to make a solution of half vinegar and half alcohol. And every time you get out of the salt water, you give yourself a fresh water rinse in your ears and you put a couple of drops in there and then dump it out. And the rubbing alcohol dries the, anything out, any salt that's left in there, and the vinegar makes a good pH level. You know, if you do get an ear infection and it's really bad, we have drops for that. Well, you had a pretty weird eye infection in the Philippines. The eye drops though for eye infection. Really they expire, yeah, really quickly and you can have very different ones. And I remember talking to the doctor when we were in um, Cape Town and he was saying that if you don't know exactly the bacteria, like you can actually damage your eye pretty severely. So... It's only happened once though. Yeah. And we were in the Philippines and I was able to go into a like, little hut and the doctor there was able to give me something that it really helped. I think so. other common stuff uh, obviously sunburns and burns in general so we've had people burn themselves on the barbecue grill and so we have a burn kit somewhere oh it's right there this is our little burn bag this is uh is this silver course like probably silvadine silvadine oh it's an afrikaans <laughs> yes <laughs> silver sulfadiazine i decide from medications we have sort of the same arrangement. So these are pretty common band-aids and things organized because we use those most often. Uh, less often is like, this is a trauma care kit with, uh, you know, gauze pads, abdominal pads, eye pads, not in here stuff, and burn uh, gauze dressing. Compression bandages and wraps, just in case somebody breaks. These are like, uh, what, moldable splints. 
lots of gauze pads. This is a sterile burn sheet in case somebody gets burned. A lot more dressing stuff. So triangular bandages, tape, roller gauze bandage, ace wrap. And I think it's nice on the back we have listed what's in there if we need to grab it in a hurry. Um, this is also a bag of uh, syringes in case we do have some injectable medications for uh, heavy duty pain relief like uh, Demerol. And we also have some injectable stuff for allergies. So in case somebody has a really, really bad allergic reaction, you can take this and jam it in them. And it's a self-contained little unit. Just as what they'd carry on an ambulance or what a police officer would carry. It has instructions on it. And this could really save somebody's life. I've had bad allergies and they're like going away now for some reason, but in the past I definitely had a problem with allergies. And we carry a lot of like uh, sertraline, is that what it's called? And whatever is the main ingredient in like the over-the-counter allergy, Zyrtec or any of those, you can get them generics. And if you happen to get hay fever along the way or anything like that, you just take one pill every 12 hours, whatever they suggest. But it's definitely a good thing to have because as you're going through different islands and stuff, you might be allergic to different plants or pollens or whatever that you don't have them back home. Other than that, asthma too. It's not a very common thing, but it's always good to have one of those inhalers around. So the active ingredient in most of these is actually like a steroid, like a prednisone albuterol. Uh, when you inhale these into your lungs, it just makes your capillaries expand and your lungs open up. So if you're having an allergic reaction and you can't breathe or if somebody's having an asthma attack, uh, these are great to have on board. Like how common is it where you can't go to a doctor and get some of this stuff? Probably I'd say like, Outer islands. Yeah, of most of the time. Most places. It's nice. I mean, of course, it's nice to have your own antibiotics and stuff like that. But, but I think in always... most places, like in Thailand, when Max got sick, uh, we were able to run him in to yeah. the beach. And there was a little, anywhere there's tourists, there's going to be a urgent care or a doctor that you can just go in and pay. Yep. Same thing in New Zealand, Australia. All through the Caribbean. There's I mean, plenty of maps. Outer islands of Indonesia, there was nothing. Yeah. Solomon Islands, nothing, Vanuatu may be in the main city, otherwise, so it's, it's pretty far out remote places. Yeah. It seems like a lot of these things are yours, Brady. Bites. Yeah. Animal bites. I've only gotten and bit attacks. by like two things in my whole life, and I'm <laughs> scarred with a bite guy. You got bit by <laughs> a monkey in Thailand. He'll, he'll just walk across your arm. Holy shit. <laughs> Go closer to the tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kind of scratched me, didn't break the skin. Oh, yeah, didn't you get bit by a human? Uh, In probably. South Africa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that the most important thing for that stuff is if you're going to be fishing, if you're going to be like in the water pretty likely to get a cut deep, whether it's caused by a bite or not. Or coral. Or coral, or, or just living and working on a boat. So some of that stuff, did you already show the suture kit that we have over there? No. One time on our, on our whole trip that we would have needed to sew anything ourselves was in Cocos Keeling when I got bit by a barracuda, right? There's been no other deep cuts besides that that were mm. bad. No. And we didn't even get to break out our sewing kit then our, our uh, suture kit, because there was a small medical office on the island of Cocos Keeling that took me in and sewed me up. But if that would have happened someplace where there wasn't, like the next group of islands we went to and it was super remote, we do carry full uh, suture kits and a full-on staple gun. So like, let's say you get hit, and hit by the boom or something like that, or you fall over and you have a pretty deep cut that you need to close up. We have a staple gun for that. And then just a small suture kit, which is just like medical thread and a curved needle. So luckily we've never had to use this stuff, but I do think it's really good to have. Uh, we're also given the, the uh, glue sticks that the ambulance drivers Oh use. yeah. Uh, it's like a skin glue. So instead of using the staple, I don't know if it's permanent or not, but yeah. uh, you just basically squeeze it in and close the skin up. Yeah. Okay. Course. And of course, one thing I talked about is, is betadine too, like antiseptics. There is a few different types of antiseptics if you happen to cut yourself or you get a bad wound. The most commonly used is probably betadine and the easiest to use and it doesn't sting. The only problem with that is it has iodine in it and that's actually what reef and coral grow from. 
So if you're surfing or you happen to hurt yourself on coral, don't put betadine on it. It's the brown stuff that stains you because that'll actually help coral grow within your cut. Well, besides that, there's a whole range of different ones. This is a antiseptic that's made from sodium hypochlorite, which is not like alcohol, but will still work. And then of course, just general isopropyl alcohol will work as well. Yeah, and being that most of us are sailing in the tropics, infection is a, a major problem on a cut. For sure. So we're always like changing bandages, always cleaning it regularly. Yeah. Dental stuff, yeah. I guess we haven't had any really severe stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. But then it's we were <laughs> Yeah. But I mean like we we've never I've never had to do like nobody has ever split their tooth on the ocean, you know, and couldn't eat or something like that. But I have quite a lot of uh, blisters or like inside, like especially if I drink alcohol, I get all of these really nasty blisters inside my mouth. So I have different kind of creams for that. I also did have to do root canal in, yeah, that was in Namibia. So I had to go in, same there, very lucky. I started feeling like this pain and I just went in and she was like, wow, you're really lucky that you came in because it was very close to the root. So she just did like an emergency root canal and I was able to cross the Atlantic. And then as soon as I got into Brazil, I had to go there again. And there was a little bit more tricky because the island we were at, uh, nobody spoke English. Well, luckily we had a very nice Delos follower that helped me and came with me to all the appointments. <laughs> Which was, yeah, to translate. The problems, right? It would be like toothache or infection. It would be like the broad spectrum antibiotics that we carry on board. Yeah, we, haven't really we, gotten we do that. have some specific pain relief medication for teeth and gums. I think it's like a lidocaine cream. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's a really highly sought after thing in the islands too. Everywhere we went, we were being asked for, you know, people were having toothaches and they wanted stuff to rub on their yeah. gums and their teeth, especially in Fiji. Yeah. Okay. Other things that are cool to have, uh, this is a pretty cheap blood pressure and heart rate monitor. I think you should have this and definitely the, the stethoscope because quite a few of the things that you're going to go through if you're working through some steps for first aid involve uh, checking people's blood pressure, their heart rate, and trying to see if they're yeah. entering shock. And it doesn't necessarily mean you know need to know what it all means. It's just if you happen to call a doctor from your sat phone and they're like, take the patient's blood pressure, tell me the numbers, all the stuff that you need to tell them, they'll tell you exactly what to do with this stuff. Okay, so the last thing that we have on Delos that's actually quite new that we just got on board is this little oxygen kit. We hadn't had oxygen on board before because it's incredibly difficult to carry the actual oxygen cylinders and you have to have a prescription or a license to get them and they have to be stored properly because they're super flammable and there's a whole other a whole bunch of reasons why the actual oxygen cylinders are tough to have but this company uh, rapid oxygen came up with one that, that creates oxygen chemically so it uses hydrogen peroxide water and a catalyst and once they're mixed together it creates oxygen and pumps it through this mask and directly into your body. The cool thing is this can be shipped anywhere and you don't need a license or anything to operate it. It's super simple. You just lift up this tag here. You put the mask on whoever needs it. And then when you turn this lever here, it creates the chemical reaction, the chemical reaction starts and it pumps oxygen into the mask for 15 minutes. So for emergency situations when you're close to shore, it's really good because it gives you that bit of extra time before emergency help gets gets to you. If you're offshore, it really helps as well because those first couple of minutes after an injury happens uh, are really important for like what happens after it and how you recover. And for us with scuba diving, this is super, super good to have on board. Any diving related injury, the first thing you wanna do is put the person directly on oxygen and that just like filters out all of the nitrogen bubbles in their system. So if anything were to happen after a dive on Delos, get right onto this and within the first couple of minutes, it's helped a lot by removing the nitrogen from your body. So oxygen is good to have for any metal kit any, anywhere. This unit is about $500. I think it's like $495. They do ship everywhere and it's not like a, a cylinder so you don't have to get a prescription for it. Oh, anything else guys? I think that's we probably, there's probably going to be a lot of questions, a lot. but if you want to ask questions, we'll try and get to them eventually.